The AEM-7 was proved to be one of the most reliable and successful electric locomotives in the United States, being a worthy recipient of the crown of the GG-1, which used to be king of the Northeastern Corridor. Nowadays, that crown is on the ACS-64, but railroads love the AEM-7 for its top speed of 125 miles an hour and adaptability to service. The engine served well under Amtrak, Mark, SEPTA, New Jersey Transit- Wait a minute. That isn't an AEM-7. This is the only other electric locomotive to be used in push-pull service by SEPTA until 2018. No, this isn't an AEM-7. This is in fact a Sia Brown Bovary's ALP44, and yes, it looked practically just like an AEM-7. I mean, just look at them. But this engine wasn't exactly like the AEM-7. The ALP44 was kinda like the AEM-7's crazy younger sister. She may be blunt and picky, but she meant well. But the ALP44 story is definitely worth telling. But in order to talk about it, we need to go back to the 80s. As Amtrak racked in passengers and money with the brand new AM7 on the Northeast Corridor, commuter railroads in the Northeast wanted to use them for push-pull commuter service. Mark was first to try in 1986, getting four, numbered 4900 to 4903, and SEPTA got 7 in 1987, number 2301 to 2307. NJT was also likely going to join the AM7 club, but they came too late, as after 1987, EMD discontinued the AM7 production, leaving NJT with no new engine, and fleets containing mainly Aero EMUs and ex Amtrak E60s. Prior to 1990, the majority of our electrified passenger service was handled by multiple unit equipment, specifically the Arrow 2 and 3 MU cars. Um, they aren't really technically just cars. I mean, they're EMUs with panographs, traction motors, electrical Did gears. Did I say cars? Actually, the Arrow MU equipment is considered a locomotive by federal standard because of their pantograph, traction motors, and electrical gear. Well, that's what I just said! Ugh. Anyways, let's continue. So, New Jersey Transit turned to ASEA Brown Bovary, or ABB for short, for a new type of locomotive that would be an improved version of the AEM-7. The LP-44 was based off of two engines, the AEM-7 as a reference model, and the power system being based off the Swedish RC-7, which was a newer model of the RC-4, which is what the AEM-7 is based upon. NJT received three batches of ALP-44s. The first, numbered 4400 to 4414, were delivered in early 1990, with prototypes 4400 and 4401 being delivered in late 1989. Five additional units, numbered 4414 to 4419, were delivered in 1995. And then there was the final batch, numbered 4420 to 4431, which were delivered in 1996. In total, that's 32 engines. The first batch were known as ALP-44Os, meaning original, the stock ALP-44. The second were known as ALP-44Es, meaning extended. They were like the Os, but slightly bigger and having other extensions optional. Finally, the last batch were known as ALP-44Ms, meaning microprocessor. As the name suggests, the M contained a microprocessor to control functions such as braking and the then new EPIC brake control stand. While a new technology at the time, this made the engines very notorious for their faulty software, which frequently caused problems and kept them out of service for maintenance, hence why they are considered rather picky engines. Now let's jump back over the Delaware River into the Philadelphia area where SEPTA is looking for a new rail car to replace the antique 1930s JG Brill bullet cars on the Norristown High Speed Line, which, while the cars were very reliable and smooth, were beginning to show their age. ABB earned the contract and started drafting and building the new N5 cars to replace them. 
However, due to the car's failing tests and other issues, the deliveries were delayed by a few years until 1992 and 1993. SEPTA sued ABB for punitive damages, and soon the case was settled. Part of the settlement included an ALP44M. SEPTA accepted it, and ALP44 number 2308 was delivered in 1996. 2308 was used in push-pull service across SEPTA's system on the Paley Thorndale, Wilmington Newark, Media Elwyn, and West Trenton lines. Even the Trenton line saw the ALP44 on occasion, along with the AEM7s, and it did it very nicely. 2308 was equipped with K5LA horns, much like the AEM7s, with one set on each end. Here's some samples of her beautiful voice. <laughs> As you may have guessed, 2308, much like her sisters in New Jersey, suffered from faulty software, being out of service, and being a maintenance hog in places like Overbrook or Wayne Electric on occasion, making 2308 a relatively rare sight in service. However, despite that, 2308 was a frequent visitor at the annual rail rodeo held at Fern Rock Transportation Center, usually accompanied with a Comet coach, a cab car, and one of SEPTA's diesels. However, the ALP44s would have an even shorter life than the AEM7s. MJ NJT's ALPs were beginning to age, and were about to overhaul them for a cost of $2 million during a two-year period by Philadelphia-based Interfleet Technology. A car builder had not yet been selected to carry out the overhaul. However, NJT also had the option of buying newer engines. In the end, NJT decided it'd be cheaper and more physically sensible to replace the ALP44s rather than overhaul them. And so, starting in 2001 until 2011, ABB ALP46s and modified ALP46As started to be tested and delivered to New Jersey Transit. As of 2011, all the ALP44s of all three models were retired, except 4405, 4407, and 4409, which were assigned to the Atlantic City Express Service. However, these remaining units were also placed in retirement with the cancellation of ACES service in early 2012. Unit 40, units 4402, 4403, 4408, and 4410 were then leased by Amtrak for work train service through the Hudson River Tunnels for a period of time during the summer of 2011, but have since been returned. During 2012, the ALP44s were prepared for storage in groups of five and this work included the removal of pantographs, having the cab windows covered with steel plating, and now these units were then moved to Port Morris Yard at the Lackawanna Cutoff Stub Track for storage in Stanhope, New Jersey, where they still stand today. They are now collecting rust and being vandalized with graffiti and parts being stolen, and it's very unlikely they will ever run again. Some say they may be scrapped by the end of the year. SEPTA then became the last railroad in the United States to have a sole operational ALP44 in existence. However, SEPTA knew this lawsuit settlement on wheels would have to go too. On December 19, 2013, the catching up plan was announced by General D. Knuppel, who listed the AEM7s and ALP44 to be replaced in Phase 1 in the Vehicle Replacement Program. By 2016, we become the only agency that still has these locomotives. Now we have a shot to not have them too long and be the sole person to have them. Amtrak 664 was leased to SEPTA in 2016 for testing to see if an ACS 64 would run fine on SEPTA tracks and to see if it would fit the center city tunnels. Tests were completed with success, and SEPTA ordered 15 ACS-64s numbered 901 through 915. 
Slowly, they entered service with 901 running an inaugural first run on SEPTA train 9561, known as the Great Valley Flyer, in July of 2018. 2308, along with the AM7s, were used on gel trains during the fall, and 2308 made her final normal service run and was the last old electric to run in normal service on SEPTA train 9553 and expressed to Bryn Mawr local to Thorndale in November of 2018. And soon it was officially retired with a farewell excursion on December 1st, 2018 from Paoli to Suburban, with 2308 leading to Suburban Station and AM7 2301 leading on the return run back to Paoli. The engine, along with the AAEM7s, except for 2302, were sent to Morrisville Yard for New Jersey Transit so they could count as PTC compliant equipment on NJT tracks, even though they never used them! Not long ago, SEPTA took back 2308 and the toasters back to reunite with 2302 and are still on SEPTA property. 2308's story is still ongoing as we don't know our future. Preservation? Being sold to another railroad? Scrapped? No one knows, but despite 2308's faulty software, the engine certainly played a role in the history of the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transit Authority, serving Philadelphia since 1964 and regional rail operations since 1983. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. I'd like to thank the following people for photos and videos, as well as New Jersey Transit for providing that 1997 training video on the ALP44. That was certainly a gem to find. I'd also like to thank the people who donated to my GoFundMe page who will appear in the credits. Your donations will ensure me to continue my work and make my videos even better. Be sure to check out Patreon, Dis my Discord server, and DeviantArt for updates and other things. Next up is the maintenance diesels, according to a poll done on my YouTube page quite a while ago, starting with the U34CH. I would have started with the BL15s, but I'm thinking I'm going to start with 4000, 50, 60, 70, and 80 series of engines, because it kind of makes sense, and besides, even though the U-boats didn't really last too long in SEPTA's hands, I think they're still worth talking about. So, until next time, ALL ABOARD!